one of you guys wrote some time ago, you really wanted to see and know what happened to the Lindemann position. One of the biggest cannon positions the Germans built during World War II here near Calais. Of course, it was a fortified area, anti-aircraft, very large cannons pointing towards England, Calais being the closest point to England. And I also know that you guys love history and historical locations just like I do and you hate to see when they're destroyed. So, since I'm in the general neighborhood filming some things out here for several of the series I'm doing, I wanted to stop by and take a look at what's left of the Lindemann position. You may not like this, but this is what I found. The Lindemann position consisted of three extremely large 40.6 centimeter ship guns. They were mounted in enormous casemates consuming more than 17,000 square meters of cement and steel each. The cannons were sometimes known as the Adolf cannon and there is still one in position in Norway that we'll go see later. It was a naval cannon that was originally designed for the early H-class battleships. These are some of the last photographs that was taken of the Lindemann position. It was also heavily bombed by Allied aircraft during the war, and on top of the hill overlooking what used to be the position, you can still see the bomb craters. Here in this photograph, it's easy to see that the casemates were placed at a lower elevation. Where I'm visiting is above from the hill looking down on what is now a man-made lake. This is one of the reasons why the position started to flood, and eventually as the channel tunnel construction took place, the whole area was filled up with silch and sea bottom and whatever they dug out that they had to place exactly right there. Here I'm standing on top of the hill, and you will have to forgive me for the voiceover. It was exceptionally windy. The microphone absolutely picked up nothing but wind, but you can see some of the casemates. This was the back entrance of what appears to be the observation bunker. And on the other side, you have a munitions bunker where most of it have been bricked up, but I believe through some of the brush and bush, it's still possible to enter that section behind here. Covered with sludge. They pulled out when they dug the canal. See, this is all sea bottom and mud. So underneath us, it's part of it. There's another part under that lake. The casemates now reside under that lake. Interestingly enough, as you can still see pieces of the position sticking out of the silch and the hill. You can still see here this piece of the water resistant tar that would have been on the outside of the casemate. That's what's sticking up. After looking at this a little closer, I believe this is one of the munition bunkers to one of the, the flock positions or some of the smaller cannon casemates that were also in place. And this hole could very well have been bomb damage from the Allied bombing campaign. And it is underneath this, from the back, I believe there is a possible entrance it was impossible to get through all this brush at the time frame I had to go have a look. But it is at an elevated position, so it probably is not flooded. But all the regular doors and hatches have been bricked up, so you may need tools to get in here. See here, they bricked this one up as well. One of the entries were. And 
And if you look at all this, it is not actual sand. This has clay in it and clearly pieces of sea bottom. And far up on the hill, I saw this casemate that I'm not entirely sure what is, but the opening is facing towards the sea. And yes, even my focus is complaining about the wind. I could barely stand straight up here. I can very well believe this was the top little building on top of one of the casemates. Or it could have been the brook that's filled up. However, I don't think so. Because the air, there's a door facing the ocean. If it was a Tobruk, it wouldn't have been. Hey, a little munition storage. One of the flak positions overlooking the Lindemann position. Remember, the Lindemann position wasn't just one gun. It was a whole position. Close defense, air defense. This is at the highest point of the hill, which is probably why it's still sticking out. And the munition will be stored in here, or there would have been... I think they bricked this up post-war. That's another one over here. This looks like a flat position very similar to what we've seen in Hanstholm in Norway and several of the other uh, Atlantic wall gun positions and fortified areas that we've seen. Probably another little flat position here on top of the hill overlooking the battery in the ocean. On the highest point of the hill up here there is a little building that clearly has been here from the wartime. It looks like it has been possibly demolished, hit by a bomb, exploded post-war. It's very hard to say, but the water retardant tar is still visible. And it's not overly reinforced with rebar, but it's a strong building. Could have been support, uh, crew quarters, storage. It's just very elevated and very exposed and something I would like to research a little bit more exactly what the buildings were but since I'm on the trip and I am just showing you what I found as requested you're gonna have to wait for the in-depth on the Lindemann position till I get back to my office I have absolutely no idea what this building was it looks fairly large but it doesn't look that reinforced. This is a piece of the roof, got rebar of course, but it's only 40 centimeters thick maybe. I don't think there was an underground. It could have been, it could have been shelter. I have to see if I can find the drawings. But there are little bits and pieces of the position still left. But the large cannon large domes, large cannon positions, they've all been covered up by mud and what they dug out when they excavated. So there you have it the small pieces left of the Lindemann position. And here, the artwork from the inside of one of the armored plates that has been rescued and is sitting in Dover somewhere. I'm still in Europe filming episodes for you guys for all of autumn and winter, so if you have any requests or something you absolutely would like to see, if I can possibly stop by and show it to you like this, I will absolutely do so. And I hope you'll like and follow because this autumn and winter there's going to be a lot of amazing World War II and World War I history coming at you from here.